Your mic is on? Yes. <laughs> All right. Hey. So we're back. Back on track. Wow, we're doing a lot. Yes. But it's all about consistency, so it's not about doing a lot in one. So let's see how far we can come. Okay. What are we talking today, about today? Uh, well, what is your name? Oh, my name is Kwame. This is me plus you. Is it's us. And my name is Elaine. And here we talk about everything we're doing in uh, life. We're just navigating our, you know, experiences yeah. as a Dutch Ghanaian couple living in Ghana and I think living in Ghana and sometimes visiting Netherlands as well. Like, you know, trying to bridge yeah. two families and two worlds. Yeah. But for now we are based in Ghana, Accra. Ghana. Um, which so is one of the, the reasons why mm -hmm. we're, we're, we're having this particular conversation. Mm -hmm. Having a child um, here or there and how to... Yeah, we just wanted to rewind a bit and um, share a bit of the decisions we've taken along the way and especially the practical decisions. Um, so, well, where to start? <laughs> you want me to take it out? No, I mean, we can start with... So, I mean, when we discovered that we were expecting, of course, the question was like, will you, are you, this is one of the first things people also ask, are you going to have it here in Ghana or are you going to have it in the Netherlands? Yeah. So that's something we talked about um, quite extensively. Because we had to put it through a lot of um, factors to see which works best for us. Yeah. yeah. I think, if I may, but you add if I w I'm right, for Karma was very vocal about wanting to have it in the Netherlands. Yes. I, um, okay, so I was coming from the uh, facilities and the ease. Mm -hmm. In terms of insurance and... Insurance? No, you mean hospital facilities, right? Yes, but if you're on insurance, it's, it's easier. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I mean. Hospital yeah. facilities, yes, if you're on insurance, it's easier um, mm -hmm. to do it in the Netherlands. So I, I thought it was, it was good to do in the Netherlands. Yeah. So for me, I, I mean, we are uh, already in getting checkups check in Ghana. And for now, I am very confident with our gynecologist. Yeah, it's been really good. She's very thorough. Are we allowed to mention the name of the... No, nah, let's not do that. Okay, that's so, really promo, right? <laughs> sponsor us and we'll mention you, no. <laughs> no, but it's not for people to... Yeah, if they, it doesn't If you matter. want to know, you can ask, but yeah. it's not mm, interesting. Um, so she's very thorough and very, I found her a bit business minded, but now she seems to be opening up more, which is uh, nice. Um, when you say business minded, she was just to the task, to work. Yeah, like it's very tough. Which is strange for somebody like you. You're used to, Dutch people are very task oriented. You yeah. You should be used to that. But remember when we were in Netherlands meeting the midwife? Yeah. She really took her time and walked so us through everything. And like, it, it was very soft kind of uh, healthcare, right, right? Right, right. Okay, now I get so it. So compared to here, it was different. Anyway, so for me, the doubt was not necessarily with the medical facilities. I fully trust the gynecologists. You just have to inform yourself well and know which decisions can come, like, uh, across and that you have to discuss with your partner. Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was more like, where do you want to be? And then I felt very strongly that I wanted to be close or at least closer to my family. Yeah, I also agreed with that sentiment yeah. very much well because um, there have been a lot of milestones that we've celebrated in our lives and we've done most of them in Ghana. And your family couldn't be present and I felt that yeah, yes. so he's talking about our wedding because we did a court signing in Ghana and the and idea a, a was dinner. that later, yes, we had a small celebration dinner, later we would do something in the Netherlands as well but to then celebrate, COVID then COVID hit, and then we didn't do that. Yeah. So and, Kwame uh, came up with the idea to have, so we've done the marriage celebration in Ghana, so why not give the people, give the people in the Netherlands like 
our people in Netherlands the experience their family of in Netherlands of, of yeah, yeah, having the first child with them yeah. there you know so I thought I mean that that would be a, a great uh, share yeah since we are literally you know sharing our lives with two worlds yeah thought it would be, it would be great to do that so we took our time going back and forth and uh, of course, everybody was eager to hear or everybody around us like, what, did, what are you guys going to do? But in the end, we came to, OK, we want to do the Netherlands. And then <laughs> that had quite some practical implications. Yeah, because there's a lot of moving parts, uh, things to yes, do. Yes, because one, may, I will, let's not go into the nitty gritty of it, but the Dutch system is very different than the Ghanaian system. So in Ghana, you, if you, want, you will give birth in the hospital right yeah you just when the baby comes you go to the ward or like where the baby is uh, going to be delivered and then your gynecologist may be there but there might also be somebody else and they just support you as well as possible with whoever is there at that particular moment yeah however in Netherlands it's a bit different because in Netherlands you can choose to have your child at home or which is quite common right yes it's common but Netherlands is only the, one of the few countries that still allows that. So you can do home or hospital or a birth house, which is like kind of a middle thing. So at home, so in Netherlands you have a midwife that is assigned Dedicated. to you, kind of. And of course, if she's not on duty, then you'll get another midwife. But the idea is that you prepare your whole pregnancy or like the whole delivery with that midwife or that team of midwives. So wherever, whatever location you choose or is necessary, that person will come along with you. Yeah. So for us, Kwame really wanted us to give birth in the hospital, but in the Netherlands, the rule is kind of, if you don't have a medical indication, or like high medical, blood pressure yeah, or any other things, yeah. then you can still give birth in the hospital, but then you're renting a room. So that will, Cost you extra money. A little more, yeah. All these things. And it will just be the hospital room. You don't get any staff from the hospital if there's no medical indication. So it's yeah. just you and a midwife who can deliver the baby. Yeah. For us, it was a bit different because we don't have our own house in the list. Our house is here in Ghana. So I was like, I don't want to give birth in somebody else's house even my parents said it would be fine i think i would be worried about maybe the stains i make or the noises that come out of me or the room <laughs> so and there's not a lot of privacy right it's my parents house and people can just come in and out and that idea of i don't mind my parents coming in and out but the idea of not being able to control that as much i was like nah that's not it for me and even if we would rent a house how are you going to explain to your your um, landlord or whatever that that you're going to have a baby in the house in the like, house it's not what people have prepared for when they are renting their house out exactly to you, so. uh, it's easier so, to go with the birth house yeah so then i discovered or through a friend who has also uh, given birth in Netherlands that there is something called a birth house. So that is a kind of living room setting next to the hospital. And it's, they have everything there. They have a shower there, they have a bed there. You can have comfy chairs there, an extra bed for the partner to sleep there. So, and it's all designed for giving birth. So, and if something happens, whether it's before, during or after giving birth, they can, the hospital is literally next door, so they can just move you. Sweep you there and then... Why? Well, if you're in the house and... Something happens and there's, there's, there's logistics then for transportation. Then has to drive to the hospital with a, a wife in labor and all these things. So we thought the, the birth house would be best. So uh, how did we prepare? There was a webinar. I did a webinar for two hours on the birth house. And also a webinar later by the hospital and another webinar by the midwife so as you can see this it's a different system in Netherlands so your midwife is your focal point but then you still have to apply tell the hospital this is and your insurance this is where I want to give birth yeah and the unique thing about Netherlands is that they have um, 
maternity care after giving birth. So in the Netherlands, it's kind of... Um, after doing the dedicated midwife, they also give you a dedicated nurse. Yes. To come and stay with you, but it's, it's for, she's going to be with you for a certain uh, stipulated... It's uh, 24. Four hours. hours, but divided into maybe three hours times eight days or about 10 days or something. Yeah. And that's what you get um, as well. But it's, that's not free, obviously. But this no, nurse... No, but if you, are, if you have Dutch insurance, insurance it's guaranteed. Part, part of it. Yes. Yeah, but for us, it's not. Yes. So this nurse is going to come and help you get used to the washing of the baby, the feeding of the baby, and the care. Even and prep. giving breast uh, Feeding. Breastfeeding and everything. So and even you, if you have donor people around, they can cook for you. They will help you clean. So anything you need in that newborn period, they can either teach you or do it for you. For the first week yeah. or first 10 days. And then you at least have a routine built around yeah. the first uh, few days of the child. So in Nellis, I feel there's more like different parts. So you have the actual preparation with your midwife, then delivery with your midwife slash maybe hospital, depending on how it goes. Yeah. Then after that, you have self aftercare where your midwife will check in, but that's just one or two times. And then the, the nursing, um, a nurse at home, that's what I call it. Yeah. The, so as you can see, very different. And then all this also had to be checked with insurance so we have like international insurance because we travel a lot back and forth uh, you need <laughs> to make sure you have the right like thing there so that was a lot of like looking into things and double checking and calling and verifying things uh, it wasn't fun but it had to happen so i literally now have a notebook and it's like preparation for the baby notebook guy was laughing at me for that but there was just so many moving parts that I just wanted to have it, get it out of my head into somewhere else where I write it down and then once in a while, like a few times a week, I check like, okay, what was on the to-do list or what should I think about or because it was just too much. Because now you think, okay, you've solved all the uh, hospital stuff, right? We made the decision to do the Netherlands, fine. But where are we going to stay? <laughs> So now we have and to think of uh, um, where we're going to stay in the Netherlands, arrange accommodation in the Netherlands. Yes, which because, is not cheap. Yeah, because we don't uh, want to stay the entire time at Elaine's parents' place. Yes. So we want to have our own space to have, like, you know, our own time to be with the child and experience, like, parenting in the beginning together. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing we have to take care of. And you can only fly up to 36 weeks which is is that eight months eight months and that means but my maternity leave on the ghana maternity leave only starts or After you have birth. three months so what most ghanaian women do and correct me if i'm wrong is that they wait till the due date until then they, they deliver months, yeah. and then they have the three months but with 36 weeks you're only eight months so that one month in between i had to talk to yeah. work and ask say like this is what we would like to do please <laughs> can we go and i have a very understanding uh, manager so sh she was fine with it she said whatever you want to do and listen to the doctor's advice so I, we were very blessed with that but still the step of okay how am i gonna say it how should i present it blah, 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 blah. and then looking into talking to the airline okay it's this week okay when is then the date that we can really fly because we also didn't want to push it to the 36th week because well th that rule literally there because they're scared that you will give birth in the plane so we we, we knew from we want to give birth in netherlands but that kind of triggered another <laughs> bunch of like of decisions to do yeah, so finding a place is one. Um, the other decision is uh, probably going to be tied to the other video you're going to be seeing um, soon, which is moving. Another yeah. thing is that in December, yes, or like yeah, our lease finishes. Well, like in less than two weeks. Yeah, our lease finishes, and we have to move from where we live now, obviously because of the dollar and how yeah it has changed the prices of everything. And we felt that, you know, because the baby is coming, we would rather, you know, spend the money 
differently than to have to spend that much here because the dollar had changed dramatically yes. in a year. So now we're and, moving. And our rent also went up a lot every year. Yeah. So that was also another issue. Here. If you get the same house, but for more money, it didn't make sense for us. Yeah. So we started early, like Kwame was very proactive with this. He started in June. Yeah, house hunting, I mean. June. <laughs> I've been house hunting since June. Yeah, and that is stressful in Accra. Uh, you have to call with agents, then they want you to meet you somewhere. You're out there in the sun. They show you at a wrong house. Oh, house, as soon as you get no there, key. The, the, as soon as you get there, oh, the house I sent you on WhatsApp, oh, somebody has taken it, but I'll show you another one. It's like they, they let you deliberately, pay. it's like they deliberately show you ugly places that don't match what they showed you at first, just to frustrate you and you be like, you know what, you, you keep that agent fee that you've taken. So it's, it's a lot. It's and a lot. they also show you ugly places that are like in your price range and then they always push they like, oh, but this house is really nice. It's just yeah, yeah, they're trying a to push you as CDs, well. Thousand CDs extra. Yeah. I'm like, ah, so, what is happening? So that, that's that's actually another video for another time. Yes, maybe we shouldn't go there. And that was simultaneous. So finding a house in Accra, that was then we said, okay, Kwame can do that better because clearly, um, glow in the dark, people see no Bruni, <laughs> and the then price will triple. Yeah. So Kwame said. Uh, that's my business. That's your business, which I'm very grateful for. But I was, in the meantime, I was house hunting in the Netherlands mm, yeah. uh, to find us a place for, for the, the, the first month before the birth. And then we, want, we said we Let's want just say the duration of the time. two months after the birth. Yeah. Yes. And uh, in the Netherlands, there's also a housing crisis at the moment. So the rent that people ask for, even sub-renting their places. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot. <laughs> we, we had kind of a budget, like, because, please uh, bear in mind, we are doing double rent because we have our house in Ghana, but we want to stay comfortably in the Netherlands. So we knew it was an investment from the start. This is what we feel comfortable with, we understand. Yeah. But the amounts asked, crazy. So luckily, um, my dad made it his military mission. Oh yeah, <laughs> to he was moving very strategically. Strategically. Like, look, I'm not even exaggerating. It's more like, uh, you know, like you put a map there and you're, you're doing like a strategy yeah. plan. Okay, this is where we're moving. This is what this person was saying. We calculate this, 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 this. It was nice to watch. Yeah. <laughs> he had his booklet and everything. He had the list and then yeah. like I called here. He literally went round to different like villages around where my parents stay. Towns, and towns. towns yes. <laughs> so in the end, it all worked out. So we've now start with my parents. Then we moved to a friend's uh, house who's going on a long trip. And it was very and uh, kind a, and genuine. Generous. Uh, kind and generous. To kind and generous. Yes, to let us have it. Uh, let us have the house. Um, and then we are going, which is, I think, going to be nice vlog material because we're going to a very tiny village. Maybe Kwame can put a map here. Put it in like, boop. Please do that. Okay. Um, it's called... Or maybe not, I shouldn't say yes. people will go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's a tiny village. That's it. Uh, I need to put it on the not map. too far from uh, from my parents' place. Yes, I don't even need to put and it on the map. Why it's you so funny because it is one street and it's very rural. And it's very rural. And Grandma's was like, so, um, so it's quite a bit of adulting that we've done. Yeah. Uh, and at some point we were really like, is this really gonna work out or not? Yeah, and even We've had that so the, many scenarios. The finances, considering all the finances, we'll bounce it off our friends and family. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll be like, you know what? One month, the one month we are like, okay, we're gonna go to the Netherlands. The next month we're like, you know what? What if we don't go to the Netherlands and we do it here? We just, yeah. You know, so we've had a lot of uh, back and forth, forth. and. 
also at some point knows. we were like maybe we won't even find out in Ghana is there any storage place where we can just storage our stuff and then we then also we thought move. about the possibility of that if we need to store it and we're coming back uh, three months later it means that when you come back you don't have a place to live yeah. you have to look for and you can't no everybody yeah. knows you can't even when you're present here i started in june i'm i didn't find a place until november you can't remote to look no you cannot you can't even when you're yeah. physically present it's almost impossible and to find it yeah. quickly so, i think it's also interesting that like now we we even though the child is not here yet we feel like we should be more <laughs> responsible like how we want to move houses Every, everything everything remove yeah everything even, revolves around yeah the baby. because we were just like okay this is way too much rent for a two-bedroom place let's be the responsible adults we are and if try we, yeah, to move get this something slightly cheaper but even more rooms like more a rooms bedroom. and because that's also another thing like when we come back to ghana we hope that grandma's mom can also support us a little bit so maybe she can stay a bit longer so then we're like okay but then we also need to have our own space because yeah so we were looking for specific specific things and oh we've had so many i was just saying the other day like wait till all of this is wrapped up like we have moved we are in netherlands we have settled in you will be amazed by how much headspace you have because we've yeah, had and, done and so you, many different steps you sleep a bit more too yeah like, because every day we would call about something or something would come up or i have a new idea or i was sitting here somebody would call me i found this place can you come and check it out and i literally drop everything and go yeah you know it's not easy so this may be not the most fun vlog, but I think people don't show you this last glamorous thing and that there's a lot of decisions to make. And of course, we made it more difficult for ourselves by wanting to uh, give it's, birth it's, in it's, another but it's place. All, but it's, no, apart from that, it's always, so long as we're together, it's always going to be these hard choices to make. Yeah, because you're literally moving between two, two worlds, worlds and... Yeah. So all this while everything came kind of together while we're also working on like the flight and the visa and... Because my current visa had expired and I needed to renew it. Yeah, so there was just a lot... Of moving parts. Of moving parts and I feel we are almost there. This last piece, I'm getting already anxious because we have to move in less than two three weeks and there's also some work things that allow my presence and i just want to get into every corner clean it up and put it in boxes yeah <laughs> it's just a lot so yeah we're gonna we're gonna share with you the move as well i don't think that's gonna be a sit down talk i'm just gonna um yeah we can show you our new home hopefully when we are in and of course aside that's for me also difficult because yes we are moving but i cannot do a lot yeah i can only maybe go through the stuff we have and like clean it up clean it up <laughs> Sorry. so adulting has been really 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 i want really like a thinking thing like no 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 thinking thinking she's very annoying but yes adulting has been really really um challenging and next level next level next level adulting yeah bye bye <laughs>